Welcome back guys. In this episode, we'll do some groundwork for the in-game screen. We'll define the basic game tick or the game loop functions and define different states for the in-game screen. We'll also make the hero flying from the left side. I actually wanted to cover the obstacles in this episode, but without this groundwork, we cannot even create or test the obstacles. So I had to do this first and I'll cover the obstacles in the next episode. Let's first start by defining some of the base code we require for the rest of the game. We are now officially and properly starting to code the in-game screen. Now as we start, one very important thing to do is to calculate the elapsed time for each frame execution. This is something we'll use very often in our game animation. You will understand more of it when we start using it, but first let's define it in the initialize function. This initialize function we already defined last time and as you already know, it will get automatically called when the in-game screen is made active. So, this dot add event listener event dot enter frame I'll call a function check elapsed. Let me define it. Now this requires three variables. Let me define them. Private var time previous of type number private var time current of type number and private var elapsed of type number. Now inside the check elapsed function, I'll assign the current time to the previous time. So time previous is equal to time current. For the next statement, I'll need to import a new class. Import flash dot utils dot get timer. I'll go back to the check elapsed function. Time current is equal to get timer. This returns the number of milliseconds that have passed since the Swift started executing. Now I'll calculate the elapsed time by subtracting the previous time from the current time. So elapsed is equal to time current minus time previous multiplied by 0.001. We are done calculating the elapsed time. Let's move on. I'll now define a private variable to store the game state. I'll call that game state and it will be of type string. This will help us track the state of the game. The major states as I can assume are idle when nothing is happening and the game is not yet started. The second state is flying when the hero starts flying and when you start playing the game. And the third state is over when the hero is dead. Next, let me place the hero out of the screen on the left side because when we launch the hero, we want him to fly in from outside the screen. I'll do that inside the initialize method. Hero.x is equal to minus stage dot stage width. Hero.y is equal to stage dot stage height multiplied by 0.5 I'll also initialize the game state variable to idle I am using string values directly here which I don't recommend but I am doing that to save time I recommend you to create a game constants class and create constants for each state ok let's first display the start button and only when it is clicked we will launch the hero. I will define the button. So private var start button of type button. This is a starling button. And in the draw game method, right after adding the hero, start button is equal to new button. I will extract the asset from the sprite sheet. So assets dot get atlas dot get texture start button 
Let me align the start button to the center of the stage. Start button dot x is equal to stage dot stage width multiplied by 0.5 minus start button dot width multiplied by 0.5. Start button dot y is equal to stage dot stage height multiplied by 0.5 minus start button dot height multiplied by 0.5. Also inside the initialize function that is every time the in-game screen is made visible let us start listening to the triggered event on the start button. Start button dot add event listener event dot triggered I'll call the function on start button click let me define it and inside this I'll just hide the button and remove the event listener start button dot visible is equal to false start button dot remove event listener event dot triggered on start button click ok let's proceed by creating a new function to launch the hero private function launch hero and inside this function I'll define an event listener for enter frame event this dot add event listener event dot enter frame on game tick so this function is executed in a loop throughout the game I'll define that inside this function I'll create a switch case with three different states as I explained switch game state and the first case is idle I'll break the second case is flying I'll break the third case is over and I'll break and finally we'll call the launch hero method inside the on start button click so as soon as you click the start button we need to start launching the hero launch hero ok launch hero function is defined and called now what should happen in the beginning when the game state is idle we need to fly the hero in so let's define a couple of variables that will help us track the hero's flight and his speed private variable player speed of type number private variable hit obstacle of type number I'll initialize that to 0 this particular variable is going to store the value that defines how affected the hero is after hitting an obstacle by default as the hero starts he is not hit by an obstacle so the value is 0 the third property is a constant private constant minimum speed of type number is equal to 650 this is the minimum speed we want the hero to fly at I'll also reset the first two variables in the initialize function so player speed is equal to 0 hit obstacle is equal to 0 all right to summarize till now when the in-game screen is made active its initialize method is called from the game class and here we reset the hero's position to outside the screen and call the launch hero as soon as the start button is clicked this defines an event listener for enter frame event called game tick and keeps executing in a loop we are all set to make the hero fly in so inside the game tick function and inside the idle case let the hero take off if 
hero dot x is less than stage dot stage width multiplied by 0.5 which is half of the stage width i want the hero to be much more towards the left so i'll multiply that half of the stage width by 0.5 hero dot x plus equal to stage dot stage width multiplied by 0.5 multiplied by 0.5 i'll add the value 10 just to make sure he crosses that line minus hero dot x i'll multiply this with an easing factor 0.05 hero dot y is equal to stage dot stage height multiplied by 0.5 player speed plus equal to minimum speed minus player speed into 0.05 we want the player to kind of ease into the minimum speed now as we defined the background in the previous episode and we also defined a variable called speed let's use that here bg dot speed is equal to player speed multiplied by elapsed now if the hero crosses this position horizontally we want the game state to change to flying state so we'll write the else part and set game state is equal to flying inside the flying case we'll reset and ease the player speed to the minimum speed so player speed minus equal to player speed minus minimum speed multiplied by 0.01 so we want the hero to ease into the minimum speed all the time this is not very necessary at this stage but as you create new items and make the hero fly faster when he collects the coffee item we want him to ease in back to the minimum speed we'll also set the background speed bg dot speed is equal to player speed multiplied by elapsed now one thing you can note is every time you modify the player speed we need to modify the background speed because that is what will give the effect of the hero flying just before we are done if you remember in the previous episode right after we created the background we hard coded the speed value to 50 we just need to remove it now and in the initialize function let me reset it back to 0 all right for the very first time in this episode let's execute our code and pray for the best so we see the welcome screen i'll click on the play button now and you should see the in game screen loaded hero outside the screen not visible yet and the start button is visible let me click on it and it should go hidden and the hero should fly in from the left side and there he is i'll run this once more by refreshing try to observe when i click the start button how the background speed also picks up slowly according to the hero's flight speed there he is so the next thing to do is to define the obstacles and bring them in from the right side we'll also move the hero up and down based on the mouse position since the mouse apis are not part of starling we'll use the touch events so all the best till then guys don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you really very soon in the next episode